let's do it. Okay, so we're back at it again. I'm um, talking about a pretty controversial topic today. But first, I appreciate the support in the past videos. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. If you're not interested in the topic, I don't know why you would have clicked on it in the first place. But hey, it's better that you're here. Turn the volume down to one, set it aside, help me out. Um, anything you can do to show me any sort of support and boost the algorithm would be greatly appreciated. And you guys know it. You guys know I always reply to all your DMs all your comments, like unless I physically don't get a notification for it or see it, I'm replying to it. Um, so eating at maintenance calories versus eating in a calorie surplus, that's kind of what the idea is. But in reality, it's main gaining versus bulking, pretty much. Um, so today's gonna be a battle of Joe, somebody who's been in the industry industry for maybe like a year um versus Greg Doucette who's been in the industry longer than I've been alive um and so here's the thing Greg Doucette likes the idea of main gaining um and everybody listens to Greg Doucette like come on it's Greg Doucette who doesn't listen to Greg Doucette but a lot of people in this particular case do not like Greg's idea of main gaining because they disagree with it. They they don't think that it is optimal um, for muscle growth. So, which is optimal for muscle growth? I have a couple points written down. We'll run through them and we'll see how it goes. So, first things first, I want to first address teenage years. Um, the situation isn't too different whether you're a teenager or older, but there's a small difference. So teenage years, when your body's growing, you should be eating in a surplus. Um, and by the way, everything I say in this video is an opinion. So I'm just gonna say it as if it's a fact, but just remember that it's all an opinion. You should be eating in a surplus um, in your teenage years because that's gonna be optimal for not just muscle growth, but growth in general. That's how you grow. That's how you grow in height. That's how you grow in weight. That's how your body literally forms. Um, versus eating at maintenance, you're still going to grow naturally because your body is still naturally growing. There's other ways that your body is going to grow naturally, but it's probably not optimal for growth at all. Like forget the muscle part at all. You need to be eating, you need to be fueling your body so that you can grow until you hit that plateau where you're no longer going to be growing. Um, to where if you're an adult or maybe just not a teenager, I don't know what you would consider the in-between. Um, you probably don't need to be eating a surplus to grow in general, but if you're trying to gain muscle, then maybe you need to be eating a surplus, but that's kind of the whole point of the video. So let's move on to the next point. Um, next point is strength. So if you're eating at maintenance, chances are, you're going to kind of rely on time to increase your strength level. To where if you're bulking, um, strength is going to be a hell of a lot different and you are going to be feeling like the Hulk. Quite honestly, like I don't know of a person who is bulking who hasn't felt extremely stronger than before. Um, but well, how does that correspond to muscle growth? Because it's not exactly um, strength that we're talking about here. We're talking about muscle growth. So how do you get bigger in the gym or how do you get bigger in general? You lift heavier weight and of course reps over anything, but, um, it's all the idea of progressive overload, um, which kind of goes into my next point. Um, reps are important. Yes. But if you're eating at maintenance and you're just lifting the same 50 pound dumbbells, um, for chest press or whatnot, versus eating in a calorie surplus and your strength goes up and now you're hitting the 60, 65 pound dumbbells, which do you think personally is going to help you grow more or gain more muscle? It's really just that simple. Personal opinion, think whatever you want, but eating at maintenance, just as a random example, eating at maintenance, lifting 50 pound dumbbells for chest press or eating a surplus lifting 65, 
pound dumbbells for chest press uh, in which both you're lifting for the same reps. Which do you think is going to give you the better results? I don't know. Personal, personal opinion. Um, anyways, my next point is lean bulking. And it's not exactly a point. It's what I feel like should just be the simple solution to all this. Um, if you don't know, I've been lean bulking for 163 days. Um, and I have kept literally visible abs. Um, I have horrible ab genetics, so the harbs, the harbs, the abs aren't really like very, um, as you would usually think. Uh, I have like two abs, but they've been there and they've actually grown and become more aesthetic. Um, throughout my bulk and i'll show an example right there this is me bulking 163 days or maybe 164 now as of today um and literally growing my abs um so this idea that if you are bulking that you're going to or not even bulking but if you're not maintaining that you're going to put on fat and it's not going to be optimal for muscle growth it's a bad idea because i'm a prime example of why lean bulking is probably the answer to this entire video um so i don't agree with the whole idea that main gaining is going to lead to fat gain and fat gain only because lean bulking 250 calories maybe 500 if you're like a skinnier person really trying to get started in the gym i think 500 is the case where um you can go ahead and do that um kind of like me um i think that's much better of an idea than eating at maintenance um and not gaining fat which in reality you're probably not gaining fat but you're also not gaining muscle which leads into i believe my last point low risk low reward higher risk high reward um so listen to those words literally exactly as i said them that's how i want you to listen to them um low risk so you're not gaining fat is the low risk in main gaining because you're eating at maintenance and chances are you're not going to gain much fat. Um, but low reward because it's not optimal for muscle growth. You cannot... So if you're in the gym, how do you um, get stronger? You overload on strength, okay? So how do you grow um, your physique? You overload on food, on calories, on energy. Um, they're all the same thing. Um, so not gaining fat is going to lead to not gaining much muscle. Um, really, it's that simple. Um, versus bulking, lean bulking, what I do, what works for me, not a dirty bulk where you're just eating food to say, oh, I go to the gym and really you go to the gym for an hour with some shitty weight because you feel like shit. I don't think I can curse on YouTube. I'm not monetized yet, it's okay. Um, and then claiming that you lift and whatnot. So if you're eating in a surplus lean bulking, you might have a higher risk of gaining fat um, because you're eating in that surplus and you are going to gain fat 100%. I've gained fat, it's very obvious, but not nearly as much as you would ever think. I showed the credentials, they were there. It's completely, honestly, almost unbelievable. Like for bulking, even in some, even any how do i word this even in somebody's body who doesn't feel too confident about themselves at all times i think i've done a pretty damn good job at staying lean throughout this process um and then high reward if you're in a surplus and you're going to the gym and you're pushing yourself at the gym um or even just pushing yourself in the slightest if you're a teenager because teenagers often don't have to push themselves as much um you're going to gain muscle like there's no way if you were not eating the surplus and going semi hard at the gym that you're not going to gain muscle. But um, low risk, the reward, higher risk, not high risk, higher risk, AKA lean bulking, higher risk for fat loss. The risk here is, or fat gain, I bet. The risk here is fat gain and the reward here is muscle growth. Pick your poison. 
I personally would prefer the lean bulk, um, and I'm a very biased person because I'm literally physically doing it myself, and it is working for me. Like, it is working. I have literally built my abs up through a bulk, um, and I'm not wasting my teenage years. I'm getting the most I can out of my natural testosterone being so high because I'm a teenager. I'm getting the most I can out of growing in general from being a teenager. Um, really anything. Yeah, I can even say I'm getting the most I can out of um, and I mean this in literally the non, non, uh, cocky or rude way possible, getting the most I can out of getting food handed to me because I am a teenager and I have, um, a lovely dad that supports this and obviously feeds me every night. So I'm really taking every step I can into taking these optimal years of teenage years, um, I'm just rambling at this point, but you get the idea. It's stupid, and once again, everything I say in this video is an opinion. It's stupid not to take advantage of the teenage years and main gain. Um, and I'm not really sure what Greg's whole idea is of main gaining as a teenager versus an adult. She never really specified from what I've watched. Um, but if you're a teenager, bottom line, bottom line, if you're a teenager, I think you should be eating in a surplus. Um, preferably a lean bulk. Don't dirty bulk. I've already gotten into that. It's, I think it's, I think the whole idea of dirty bulking is honestly just a big cover up for wanting to eat food. Um, lots of it at least. And then if you are not a teenager, um, an adult or anything in the middle, I didn't talk about earlier, I don't really know what's in the middle. Um, I think the choice is yours. The choice is yours obviously either way, but I still think that it is completely 101% more optimal to eat in a calorie surplus than main gaining. So the choice is yours, you decide. Um, but that is going to be a wrap on today's video. It was a good conversation. Um, I'm going to get better at like finding where to cut these videos and edit them. But for now, I just kind of want to throw myself out there um, and really just see if you guys even supported this idea in the first place before I got into this and that and the third. Um, which you guys really do seem to be enjoying. And I honestly wasn't too confident in these videos because I felt like they were just thrown together in one take with little effort. But I, sometimes that's what people like because it feels like I'm having an A-B conversation to you. I understand it completely and I'm happy that you guys like them. Some people were saying that they liked them more than my TikTok. It's craziness. I don't know. You let me know down below. Make sure to comment for the algorithm, like, subscribe, turn on notifications, share the video, um, anything you can do to support me. Use my code at RISE, JVDO7010. It's in the description. There's a bunch of stuff in the description. I think that's about it. Um, so, bottom line of this video, main game. <laughs>